in our friends, in our jobs, and in jobs that we want to go back to. Lord, we just pray right now that uh, you would bring a sense of peace, and not only in our church family here in Kamloops, but uh, worldwide, that uh, you would give God's people a sense of purpose, a sense of destiny, that we're going to walk through this, that we would be able to come out as shiny examples of what it means to be a believer through the end of this. Lord, specifically, we pray for, for families that may be struggling financially, struggling, struggling emotionally. We pray, God, that you would come and give them uh, a, a big, warm hug. Lord, that uh, it would be like a warm blanket that would be covering these people that just need a, a, a sense of your love and a sense of, of belonging. God, we want to do that here at our church here in Kamloops, but all around the world, that you would raise up God's people to be that, that those people that would be able to share your love and share your goodness. Lord, we specifically pray, pray for families that have been homeschooling and, and the challenge that goes with that. We pray, God, that your anointing, that the teaching anointing would come on mothers and fathers and nannies and guardians and grandparents. Lord, that they would be able to, 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 to educate these children in, in the things they need to learn. Lord, supernaturally, you would help us with wisdom. And Lord, for the, for the students, God, that you would give them a spirit of, of humility. And, uh, and obedience and, and to be able to, to submit to, to their parents and their teachers. Lord, that uh, you would do something miraculous even in that, in that arena as well. And Father, for, uh, for people that are needing healing, Lord, uh, we, especially for, for Kim, God, we're so grateful that you are, have been touching her and that she's coming out of this. We pray that even tonight, as she walks out of this uh, building, that she would be 100% healed in Jesus' name. And everybody that's uh, watching live or, or watching the recording, God, that they would reach out in faith and trust you for healing, not only of their physical body, but their, their emotions and their, their mind. But most importantly, we would be healed in our spirit. We would be one with Jesus, that he would be our Lord and our Savior. We would trust him with our eternities. So God, we're so grateful for all that you've done in our lives. And thank you for these few moments that we were able to, to share with, with one another. And we pray that you would use it for the furtherance of your kingdom here in Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada, and around the world. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen. Hey, welcome to church. My name is Dan from The Lighthouse here in Kamloops. And I'm just out at the airport actually here. It's a place I like to bike and walk out in the trail here, the um, Rivers Trail. And usually when I'm out here, I've got my earbuds on and I'm listening to music. I really enjoy uh, listening to Christian music, good godly messages, something that encourages me, fills my mind with good thoughts and good things. Uh, decades ago, I decided that I just wanted to listen to just Christian music. Now, I listen to all sorts of different kinds of Christian music, whether it's uh, rock uh, with, with Skillet or Lecrae doing his hip hop and rap and Toby Mac, whole bunch of different kinds of um, different genres. I even enjoy pop music. Uh, one of my favorites is for King and Country. In fact, last night they won um, Artist of the Year at uh, the Dove Awards. And I was watching it last night and it was kind of cool seeing the different uh, Christian artists and bands uh, getting recognized for uh, the amazing anointed music that they make. So uh, one of the, some of the f uh, f popular ones were uh, Waymaker, uh, they won Song of the Year. And uh, Tasha Cobbs Leonard won Gospel Artist of the Year. And then of course uh, the recorded Song of the Year, Worship Recorded Song of the Year, was The Blessing by Elevation Worship, you've probably heard of that. And uh, finally, what would 2020 be without uh, Kanye West winning a Christian Music Award uh, for the song Follow God? I told you I love music, and of course, God loves music as well. And uh, throughout the Bible, there's all sorts of different references about uh, how music can be used as a tool to honor God and to worship Him and to draw closer to Him as well. So... 
God loves songs so much that uh, he actually put a whole book in the Bible that's called Psalms. And it just means, it just means uh, poems or songs. And it's a, a collection of, uh, of different songs and poems. And it's, in fact, it's the largest book of the Bible. Uh, it's 150 Hebrew poems. Uh, it was, they were written about 3,000 years ago. So could you imagine that? What did the world look like 3,000 years ago? I wonder how they wrote them or how they published them. Like, did they have Spotify? Or, well, I mean, obviously not. But they didn't have YouTube or, or Pandora or maybe Tidal or Apple Music. But these were songs that uh, the, the, the most predominant uh, writer in the book of Psalms was uh, the, the giant conquering uh, David, who later became king. And he wrote about half of them. Uh, some of the other authors were um, Solomon and Moses, but uh, many of them actually just remain anonymous. And the book of Psalms, there's a lot of uh, kind of cool things about it. The, uh, some amazing, interesting facts about it are that uh, it actually has the most chapters of any book of the Bible. There's 150 of them. And it's got the shortest chapter of the Bible. That's uh, Psalm 117. And there's only two verses in it. And it has the uh, longest chapter of any book in the Bible. And that's uh, Psalm 192. So, excuse me, Psalm, Psalm 119. And it has uh, 76 verses in there. 176 verses. Okay. So Psalm, 19, Psalm 119, there's a bunch of cool things about it. It's, a, it's an acrostic poem. And I just read, I just uh, reading this off of my Bible gateway app. So it must be true. Here, let me read it for you. Psalm 119 is an acrostic poem, the stanzas of which begin with successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Moreover, the verses of each stanza begin with the same letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So get this, 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, eight verses per stanza, 160 verses, 176 verses in the chapter, and boom, mind blown. So that's Psalm 119. Now you've probably memorized uh, different portions of scripture out of uh, the book of Psalms. And I'm gonna give you my, uh, my top 10 of, uh, of Psalms. So I'm going to go through this quick. If you need to write them down, you go right ahead. Psalm 27, 14. These are just ones that you may have memorized over the years. Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 46, one, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. Psalm 51, verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Psalm 55, 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Psalm 91.1 Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 119.105 Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. And finally, Psalm 23. Probably many of you guys have uh, memorized this portion of scripture. I know I did when I was a teen. I got saved when I was 15, and it was one of the disciplines that was so important in my life and my spiritual growth as a, uh, as a young person. And uh, just to, to quote the first three verses, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, is the King James says. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. I'm actually just making my way down uh, on the, the Kamloops uh, airplane terminal. And uh, I'm just meeting up with the Thompson River. And it looks like that these waters are still. So 
I'm going to go sit down here for a moment and get into um, my main text. So I'm just going to be covering the first chapter of Psalms. I figured that's a good place to start when we've been talking about the Psalms. So Psalms chapter 1. And there's only six verses in the chapter, uh, but there's some power-packed truths buried, buried in them. So I'm just going to be... Um, Quoting from the, the message paraphrase first, but uh, I'm just going to get to the end here and then, uh, then we'll pray. Actually, right here is good. All right. What a beautiful location it is here. You can hear the birds. There's ducks off in the distance. And it uh, looks like a beaver dam right there, too. Hopefully we'll get a chance to look at that uh, right at the end. Just as the sun's setting here, uh, Ref Reformation Day, actually, Kamloops. I'm right at the Thompson River. The, the, both the rivers, North and South Thompson, meet right here in Kamloops, just about a kilometer down the road, down the river here. And then uh, several kilometers down, down river, it meets up with um, the Fraser River uh, in Lillooet. Psalm chapter 1, but let's pray first. God, thank you for this beautiful creation, this amazing place that we call home in Canada and British Columbia and right here in Kamloops, the River City. I pray, God, that as I share these scriptures, that your Holy Spirit would uh, anoint my words and the scriptures would go through my lips and into the hearts of the men, women, and children that would hear this and would grow deep roots into their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Psalm chapter 1. Like I said, it's the message paraphrase that I'm going to be quoting from initially, and then we're going to go to uh, the New Living Translation. How well God must like you. This is Psalm chapter 1 in the message. How well God must like you. You don't hang out at Sin Saloon. You don't slink along Dead End Road. You don't go to Smart Mouth College. This is the message paraphrase. It's kind of cool. It's kind of modern English. Kind of the, uh, the vernacular of the day. Verse 2. Instead, you thrill to God's word. You chew on scripture day and night. You're a tree replanted in Eden, bearing fresh fruit every month, never dropping a leaf, always in blossom. You're not at all like the wicked, who are mere wind-blown dust, without defense in court, unfit company for innocent people. Verse 6, God charts the road you take. The road they take is Skid Row. So we're going to break this down here in the um, New Living Translation, Psalm chapter one. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step, in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. So that word, the very first word that starts off, the longest, uh, the, mo the chapter in the Bible has the most, or the book in the Bible has the most chapters. Here's how it starts, blessed. Now, I don't want to just skim over that word because it's an important word. And it's a word that's describing us as Christians, believers. And the dictionary definition of the word blessed is made. There's two, two of them here. One is made holy. Number two is consecrated. So like set apart for service. And the Old Testament uh, word in Hebrew, that word blessed is esher. And it's just one simple definition and it means happiness. Now, my question for you today is, are you happy? It's a bit of a tough question for some, but others, right away, they would say, yeah, of course I'm happy. I'm blessed. God's blessed me with um, my family, my health, my church friends, finances, so many things that uh, you could be blessed with and declare that you are happy. Now, most people's life goals include happiness. They want to, to, to live happily ever after, if you will. 
And there was a popular song a few years ago that uh, was simply just called Happy. And it was a, a bit of a catchy tune. And uh, it actually had, a, it currently has almost 2 billion, that's right, billion, not million, 2 billion views just on YouTube alone. We want to be happy in our lives. Blessed, consecrated, made holy, and happy. So the verse continues. Blessed is the one who does not walk in, the, in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. So this blessed person is actually described by what he does not do, which seems a little bit strange. So the people who, who he things that he does not do and the people that she does not hang out with or the places he does not go. Many times in life, saying no leads to a much better yes. Now, some may think that the Bible encourages negative thinking. Or it's a book of do's and don'ts, a bunch of rules and regulations. But I think the Bible and living the Christian life is so much more than that. Because I want you to think for a moment uh, about elite athletes. <laughs> Not like me. <laughs> I'm maybe a wannabe uh, athlete. But uh, you know what? We just saw the playoffs end in uh, Major League Baseball and uh, WNBA and the NBA. And those are top-notch athletes. Absolutely, 100%. So many times that they actually say no in order to attain their goals. Whether it's Brianna Stewart of the Seattle Storm or LeBron James of the Los Angeles Lakers, they are disciplined superstar basketball players. I wonder how many times a year they have to say no. No to overeating or eating junk food no to sleeping in, no to staying up late to chill, no to going out uh, to party with friends. You know what, friends? Them saying no turned into championships, turned into MVPs. Now, those are the kind of yeses and goals that they have worked for decades for. So number one, we need to say no to bad advice. Because in, in verse 1, it's saying that we need to be careful to who we listen to. We can't walk in step with the wicked. We can't, we can't listen to people that will bring us down. To be negative influences in our lives. Godly counsel is crucial to our success. We need to say no to bad advice. And number two, we need to say no to bad associations. The second part of the verse here, it says, or stand in the way that sinners take. We need to be on a godly path. We have to be careful who our inner circle is. And it's not saying that we don't befriend non-Christians, that we shun those people in our lives. That's not what the scripture is saying at all. And sadly, some people do that and and, and I did that, uh, in a sense, when I'd first uh, received Christ. And I regret that, and I'm fixing it now. But we need to be careful when we hang, our, hang out with people that don't believe like us, they don't act like us, they don't talk like us. We have to be careful not to become like them. It should be our goal for them to become like us. For them to have exposure to Christian living and to, to godly habits that they would want to see how amazing God is and how successful our lives are and how blessed we are how happy we are and that they would want to be like us so number three another thing the last thing we need to say no in according to the scripture is we need to say no to bad actions that verse ends it says or sit in the company of mockers it's important to honor God with our actions. We have to say no to sin. We have to say no to rebellion. It's not easy, but God can give us the power to resist temptation, 
to say no to the work of the enemy. So we want to worship God with our bodies. And let's go to verse 2, Psalm 1, verse 2. It says, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night? Now here's what we're actually supposed to do. So these are the do's of, of the scriptures, or of this passage of scripture. And I want you to notice that it says, it's his delight. It's this person's delight. The one who's blessed, it's their delight. It's not a chore. They're actually happy to do it. It's not, they're not doing it begrudgingly. It's a delight. Now, the best way to get to know God is to get to know his word. Chances are he's not going to write a message in the skies. Although, how cool would that be if you just got a message up in the skies or, <laughs> or some lightning burns a message from the Lord into your front lawn. That would be cool, but it's probably not going to happen. You may not even hear an actual audible voice from the Lord. I never have. I've been saved since 1986. But I have heard God's word and God's voice through his word. That's how he speaks to us. God wants us to meditate in the Bible. Meditate on the Bible. Now, what does that mean? It means uh, to think about it or to ponder it. Wonder about the depth and intricacies of the scripture. Isn't that cool? He wants us to ponder, to meditate. Now, the Hebrew word for meditate there is daga. And it's kind of a, a an interesting meaning. It's an interesting translation in that it means to utter, to speak, muse, even contemplate. You're thinking it through. You're just pondering. It's almost like you would savor like a steak or whatever your favorite food is. It's just like you're you're just taking some bites and you're just savoring it and the juices are just mm, 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 in your mouth and you're just like talking to yourself, oh, this is so amazing, this is so good, yummy, mm, bean dip, mm, drizzy, thank you. Whatever your favorite food might be. And that's what meditate means. Just to be thinking it over. Now in verse 3, Psalm 1-3, that person, so the person who meditates, the person who is saying no to these bad things, bad influences in their life. It says that person is like a tree planted by streams of water. And I purposely came down here uh, to Thompson River to look for a tree planted by streams of water. And I found one and we're going to walk over to it right now. It says that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. And whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. That's how God wants us to be. Now right here, these are just some bushes. Right here by the river. Different kinds of bushes and tall grasses. But we're going to make our way over to this tree. I'm not sure how close I'm going to get to it. It's pretty rocky and bumpy here. I don't really want to go for a swim. <laughs> All right. Let's finish this off here. Whatever they do prospers. That's what the scripture says. We are to be like a tree. So it's something living and vibrant. Something, something that's growing. It's not dead or stagnant or stale. We need to be making progress. Trees grow. Trees have leaves and they grow and they, they, go, they plant their roots and they grow down as well as up. All right, I'm just going to grab a seat right here and we'll just give you a little shot of this tree. Actually, there's a tree and there's um, it looks like a beaver dam down there too. Oh, I think a duck, a duck or a loon or something got scared. All right, there is that tree right there. Let me talk about that tree here for a little bit. That tree is growing, it's living, it's vibrant. 
God wants us to build deep roots just like that tree. Now, yesterday here in Kamloops, we had, if you, rem if you remember, we had some, some pretty crazy winds in the afternoon. And it was like 55 kilometers per hour winds. And you know what? That tree is still standing. It probably lost some leaves. Maybe took a little bit of a beating. But those 55 kilometer winds did not uproot that tree. Did not bend it over. Doesn't look like there's any broken branches. Why? Because it's got deep roots. It's living by the streams of water. It's planted firm and deep. And that's how God wants us to be as well. Let's keep reading. Verse 3, Psalm 1, chapter, Psalm 1, verse 3. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Okay, well, let's stop there for a minute. So what does fruit speak of? Fruit speaks of production, of growth. And it, it, bearing fruit, it's, it's giving refreshment to those around us. Have you ever, on a hot day, just wanted um, a piece of fruit, whether it's like a juicy orange or some Okanagan cherries? Oh, how about this? A nice slice of watermelon. Now, I like my watermelon cold, but maybe you don't. I actually eat, eat the seeds. Maybe you don't, but that's okay. But fruit is refreshing god calls us to be fruitful even in the garden god told adam and eve what did he say be fruitful and multiply we need to be making progress we need to be have bearing fruit giving refreshment to those around us we can't just be takers it's important to be to have a giving spirit and bless those in your circle We need to be fruitful, to be able to offer nourishment, hydration to those that God has put around us. Finally, verse three, in right the, la the very last ver ver uh, line there in verse three, Psalm 1, three. And whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. God wants us to persevere. We're not giving up. Now, this tree is likely going to lose all its leaves just because the way that tree is. And if I keep looking around, I'll probably find an evergreen one that doesn't lose its trees. But this one's going to. God's calling us to be a tree that has leaves that don't wither. So he wants us to persevere. We're not giving up. I think that's, the, that's what that speaks to me. We're not just having things fall off or... Or, or throwing in the towel or quitting. That's not who God wants us to be. He wants us to prosper, to prosper in our health, to prosper in our emotions, prosper in our spirits, prosper in our finances. God is calling us to prosper. So what is it in your life that you need some help with? What area of your life do you need God to come in and take control? I would encourage you to chase God. We chase so many things in our lives. I know I do. I have. Things that have led me astray. Things that have wasted my time. Wasted my money. <laughs> and it's a shame, but it's how we learn. And that's okay to learn from our mistakes. But my prayer for you in a moment is going to be that he helps you get planted just like that tree back there. And that your roots would be deep. So when the, the 55 kilometer per hour winds come, it won't make a difference because you are sturdy. You are planted firm. And you're going to prosper. So thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. We count it a privilege to have you visiting us online. If you have any prayer requests, just write them in the comments below. 
or you can contact us directly at the church. We, uh, you can find us on social media at Lighthouse Kamloops on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, we have two services in person, a week on a Sunday at 10 a.m. and then 11.30 a.m. at 702 Columbia Street, right downtown on the corner of 7th and Columbia. We also have uh, Wednesday meetings at uh, 6.30 prayer and worship. We do outreach on Tuesday. We are trying to really press in on what God has called us as a church to. We're not giving up. We're, 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 doesn't matter what the winds are. Doesn't matter what the, um, the, the, what's going on around us in the world. We are chasing God. We are persevering. We're growing our deep, our roots deep, and we're not giving up. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to pray, and then uh, that'll be it. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for what you're doing in the lives of the men, women, and children here in Kamloops, in British Columbia, in Canada, those that will be listening um, when, when the video is live, and also the ones that will be listening after. We pray that your Holy Spirit would reach out to these people and just bless them, and prosper them, and draw them close to Jesus. So thank you for this time in your word. We pray that it would grow deep roots in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey man, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed uh, all this beautiful scenery. What a blessing it is to live here in the River City. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.